have passing of the brilliant interviewer, Sir Michael Parkinson. You could be forgiven for thinking that, in fact, the chat show is dead. I mean, as Parkinson and myself once said, there aren't many major stars really out there that you really now want to interview. Part of the problem, you know, that we both agreed upon was simply this. In the old days when you first started, you know, when he started, he said people would come on to chat about their careers. They didn't necessarily have a movie, a book or a product to, you know, promote. A more recent chat show, you know, King, if you like, Alan Carr, the comedian, told me that he got fed up with doing the show, as did the late Paul O'Grady, because you really just had to work the plug into virtually every single sentence and paragraph. And this is the bigger problem. However, the BBC seemingly seem to think that they've now found a replacement already for the brilliant Sir Michael Parkinson. As ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning. Neil Sean here. Nice to see you. I hope you're well today. Let's have a wave. Yes, you're right. A bit windy again. I know. Oh, don't. It's sort of thinking, is it coming autumnal already? We've had nothing here, but um, it's not been the best summer. Do you know what I mean? I love these headlines, don't you? Oh, we're going to have weeks of heat. And this is what the Met Office apparently have said. Never happens. I'm sure they do it to fakely cheer you up. You agree? Don't? I know. It's I prefer them to just be honest and say, it's going to be miserable and rainy. <laughs> you should know where you stand, don't you? A little bit like this dilemma that they have now over at the BBC. As I say, Michael Parkinson was the king of the chat show, as many people know, uh, from the early 70s. Defected to ITV, went back to the BBC, went back to ITV. Interesting stuff, as you can imagine. But it's difficult now, as I say, because there aren't really that many instantly known celebrities. And of course, those that you get offered, including myself, I turn down because they're so young, they've only got a product to plug and very little else. There's no substance to their story. But the BBC believe that their highest paid star in the corporation, Claudia Winkleman, is the key to the success. I kid you not. You see, Claudia is already the co-host of one of their biggest shows, Strictly Come Dancing, alongside Tess Daly. She also has her own Radio 2 broadcast. And on top of that, a very successful, some say, a quiz stroke reality show, which debuted last year called Traitors. That's coming back. Look a bit tediously boring to me, but that's just me. But apparently, Claudia's now recently filmed a chat show pilot, and everybody was oohing and ahhing about it, saying how good she was, and simply, you know, they couldn't wait to get it into production. Of course, this is where it's going to be rather tricky. There's two sides to this, you see. The BBC paying Claudia so much have to be seen as getting value for money. But the bigger problem with the BBC is this. They're not allowed to plug things on air. So, yes, you can mention the book, but, you know, you can't, for instance, plug a shampoo, as, say, Claudia advertises for anti-dandruff on commercial channels. Confusing, I'm sure you'll agree. So now, going forward, they've got to try and find a way to make sure that they can get the biggest A-list guests that there are left to come on and chat to Claudia without it being seen as a viable plug, a visible plug. And that really is now the problem. But the BBC assure me, yes, I do speak to them, that they've found the perfect antidote now to the very first successful female chat show host. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember Joan Rivers being a chat show host, and that, to me, was solid gold. The others, like Johnny Carr, and of course Jack Parr, so many others, Dick Cavett, how brilliant were they? They made the conversation with ease and made it engaging for the viewer. Let's hope that Claudia's been watching some old tapes of those, and rather, not some of the more latter-day ones, that seemingly fail to connect to the more relevant guests. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.